On the breakfast uh, this morning, of course, uh, we have a very, very interesting in discussion as countries of the world affirm their commitment to a carbon neutral climate by 2050 following the Paris Agreement of 2015. We look at Nigeria's readiness for energy transition by 2050. Also on the breakfast, we take a look at the 178,459 unaccounted firearms by the Nigerian police force and 3.22 billion naira paid to ghost contractors, its implication for the fight against insurgents. And as always, we take a look at the papers this morning for a quick review of the biggest stories making headlines across Nigeria. And glad to have you on the breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's uh, back to work uh, across the country. Everyone who had a public holiday yesterday that we didn't, uh, welcome back to work. And we hope that you enjoy the next uh, two hours and further with us. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. And I am Messi Bokpo. It's good to have you join us as usual this morning on the show. Absolutely. And uh, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Okay. I hope that at some point I can share my uh, story <laughs> of how I lost 23,000 Naira yesterday. I've been uh, feeling sorry on the third for day, you. <laughs> on the third day of the, of the new year. You know, mm. that's how I started my year. But uh, aside that, let's talk about, you know, some of the trending stories this morning. We'll start in River State and, uh, you know, where the governor of the state, Nyeso Mwike, has um, placed a seeming ban on prostitution and uh, nightclubs. Um, but it's not necessarily because of COVID-19 and, you know, to curb the spread in River State, because the last time I was there, it didn't seem like there was, you know, anything like a pandemic and nobody was wearing any face mask. But this time he's blaming the, you know, the, these vices. He's saying that prostitutes and, of course, uh, drug peddlers and drug users and, uh, you know, uh, people who also visit the nightclubs are constituting a nuisance in certain areas of Port Harcourt. And because of that, he has placed a ban on some of all those things, which, uh, in my opinion, is not is not going to work, you know, because he can't necessarily just place a ban on those things. Prostitution is not necessarily legalized, you know, in any part of the country, but um, it does exist, you know. And also, you know, in River State, it still will take the uh, State House of Assembly to, you know, effect such a ban, you know, because you can't, you can't necessarily criminalize, you know, a thing if it's not in the law, you know. So I'm not sure how exactly... Uh, he plans to do this. You know, I also saw some people, you know, push some of those uh, religious connotations to it, um, you know, like it will be in, in, in the north, you know, and with his band and the likes, you know, who simply wake up one morning and say, oh, they don't like what this looks like and they place a ban. But we would, would get you to watch, you know, Governor Wiki um, express himself with regards to this and then we'll get to share our thoughts right after. Um, so listen and um, watch. Governor Wike, in his 2022 New Year message at the Government House, Port Accord, said the directive stems from failure of the federal government and its security agencies to rein in those behind illegal oil bunkering and artisanal crude oil refiners in the state. The governor said the state government has equally appealed without success to persons engaging in this illegal business to consider its negative effects on the economy, environment, public safety and public health and disengage from it. He has also directed all council chairmen and community leaders to locate, identify and report to his office all those behind illegal bunkering and crude oil refining sites in their localities for prosecution. As a state government, we have drawn the attention of the federal government to this problem and requested for its intervention to stop the activities of illegal bunkering and artisanal crude oil refiners, which have been identified as the main sources of the suit pandemic. Unfortunately, the federal government has remained inexplicably silent over a request and even complicit to a large extent with security agencies actively aiding, encouraging, and protecting the artisanal refiners to continue with their harmful activities unabated. Concerned about the operations and social harmful activities of nightclubs within residential areas of the state, the governor has placed an immediate ban on all nightclub activities, including nighttime trading and street prostitution along Abacha Road and surrounding streets in Port Harcourt. The state government has placed an immediate ban on all nightclub activities, including nighttime trading and street prostitution along Abacha Road and surrounding streets, particularly the Casablanca area, to stop the harmful effect 
of these depraved activities on the moral development of our children and society at large. Governor Wiki stated that government will take over most vacant plots or uncompleted buildings in the old and new government reservation areas, GRA. By taking over all sorts of abandoned plots and uncompleted buildings, we are the first targets of occupancy of several undeveloped plots of land in old GRA, Port Harcourt, for breaching the covenants attached thereto, which were also allocated to interested members of the public for immediate development. He also announced the immediate ban on activities of cat pushers who have become notorious for indiscriminate scavenging of manhole covers and directed law enforcement agencies to arrest and prosecute anyone who attempts to violate this ban. Well, uh, there you have it. He spoke on a couple of things, oil bunkery, um, you know, but our focus this morning is the ban on prostitution and nightclubs and the likes, you know, and it seems, you know, like he, um, you know, does have a point, you know, trying to clean up the city. And, you know, he also mentioned that it uh, um, is affecting the young, you know, residents of Port Harcourt, you know, and some of all of that morally um, will affect them and, and all that, you know. But like I said earlier, you know, I, I don't know if, you know, you can just as governor place a ban on something. Um, you know, if you if you go on with it, you know, and you're you know, it's, uh, you're arrested, um, what are you going to be charged with? You know, if if it's no law, if it's not an, you know an actual law criminalizing it in the state, then um, you know it seems you know a little dictatorial, you know, in my in my opinion. And these are things that have existed before we came. They are things that will you know continue to exist. You know, with regards to you know fight against drug peddling and drug use. Um, that's the responsibility of the um, NDLEA, you know, the state office of the NDLEA. They are the ones who should take up that responsibility to, to ensure that they clean up um, River State and clean up Port Harcourt of those drugs that he's complaining about. Prostitution and the sale of sex has existed long before, you know, some week here, um, um, and it will continue to exist even, you know, um, after him. Um, you cannot just simply ban, you know, um, prostitution. You can close nine clubs, you know, and maybe. Um, but once well, again, you know, these, these persons, you know, had a, they got a license from the River State government to run those nightclubs. Um, maybe those licenses can be revoked, maybe. No, um, but, and they still will be able to approach the court, you know, for, for some clarity. No, so, so it's also, you know, to say that whether or not the governor has a right to, you know, to ban uh, nightclubs and prostitution, that's also one question on one hand. And on the other hand, you also need to begin to ask yourself, like you had mentioned, uh, prostitution, it's actually an old ancient practice. It has existed way before, I mean, we have lived, including the governor himself. And there's no country, there's no part of the world that you don't have street prostitute. Now, I know that those who, I mean, religion and those who are actually, you know, believe in certain religion would come with strong argument. But this, this, this is actually, you know, the reality. But to also look at it, that a lot of persons who you find on the street are not necessarily on the street because they want to be on the street. But it has become, you know, a means of economic necessity. And that's why they are there. It's a means of you know, livelihood for a lot of persons. And, you know, to, to put it very straight, it's because jobs are not available. I mean, the government has failed in providing jobs and basic amenities, and some persons have taken to finding a way, you know, of survival and making a living. Now, to also talk about the nightclubs, you want to categorize them. I mean, what would become of the people Okay, so as much as you say you want to, you know, you want to clear the states and make sure that everywhere is very clean. I mean, I really like his zeal and his energy right there. But let's also find out what are you doing in place to, you know, to cushion all of this. So when you now ask the people, get off the streets, no more prostitution, and then you shut down the nightclubs. Uh, nightclubs have become, you know, a huge source of, you know, livelihood for a lot of people. It's business. So you're saying that, you, you know, you're, you're, yeah. you're, shutting down people you're shutting down businesses across. So what will happen? And this is a period where, we're, you know, we're, we're looking at crime and criminality that's actually on the, on the high. And so you want to talk about pipeline vandalization and bunkery and what have you. Yeah. So as much as it's like saying, um, you know, we want to stop the importation of rice, but we're not self-sufficient in rice production. If you say you don't want the people to engage in, I'm thinking that this is actually as much as we say, we'll, we'll never get to a society where we're going to eradicate, you know, Nigeria and the world entirely of prostitutes. There will always be those who will be on the streets. But let's look at it at the fact that it's an economic necessity for a lot of persons. What are we doing to take these persons off the street? Aside Maybe we we'll look for another, you know, approach, advocacy, and trying to yeah. reintegrate them and get them, you know, to um, engaging in other sorts of livelihood. That would rather be a better approach. Besides an economic necessity, it's also a... <laughs> I have no idea what you're about to say. <laughs>
you know what <laughs> I mean. <laughs> so besides, you know, that part, you know, it's also because I mean, you can't stop people from having those cravings and those urges, you know, and and um, you know, I think as you know, as a country, because of, it, it, you it know, depends our on who, it, it depends on the, um, which side it comes from. Both I mean, ways. It, who is patronizing? Both who's ways. buying? Who's selling? Both ways. Um, oh, okay. You can't necessarily stop those things, but at the same time, you know, I think that you know, at, at a point in Nigeria, you know, I understand the religious, you know, covering that we always have. Even if a lot of times, you know, you know it's, it's very deceitful, but um, we cling on to religion like like no other country in the world. But um, it's it's still, um, you know, we should get to a place in, in our country where we get to discuss on legalizing some of all these things to make it a safer space and a safer workspace for these, you know, these persons. Um, you know, and that includes abortion at some point. Um, we're not there as a country yet, and I understand that a lot of people would argue and would say, you know, um, no. But, you know, at some point, you know, as the world continues to develop and, you know, we, we continue to have conversations about where we're moving as a country, we should get to having those conversations. But since we're not there, uh, this is where we are. But once again, I still think it's dictatorial. And like you said, you cannot just simply close down people's businesses because you don't like the way, you know, it looks to you religiously and, and morally. Um, that's not enough, you <laughs> so, know, to shut down so... a, a business. As long as they're not breaking any laws and you have not put any actual laws in place to criminalize some of these things, then you cannot simply just shut down their businesses. Um, um, if you say, okay, you know, we're going to revoke licenses or we're going to try to clean up these areas, we don't like the way it looks at night and some of all of that, then, you know, that's, that, you know, it's fine. Um, regulation would make more sense than, you know, simply, you know, waking up some morning and saying, you place so, so in nine clubs. I'm, I'm but looking... I thought people mm. drink a lot mm. and party a lot. I'm sure everybody knows that. So what, what next are they going to be doing? So uh, I'm looking forward to a time where we would say let's ban the activities of cults and cult, you know let's ban cultists and the activities, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that would make a lot of sense, you know, because this person's actually engaging. I mean, if you look at it to the most of it, you find that this person's actually engaging, uh, you know, some kind of crime and criminality. A lot of crime and criminality that's been happening have been attributed to some sect, you know, cults and gangs and what have you. So maybe we should be challenging we should channel our energy uh, in that direction however but you know it's just a statement it's a policy statement government across board everywhere especially in nigeria uh, i mean it's part of the practice to always make all of this statement and you know procure um, i mean make all of this um, statement and policies which at the end of the day you would say if that's going to happen we will need a legislation you know to die effect and it can't just just happen so let, let's yeah. just take it as one of those you know very, very um, awesome policy. Yeah, I, I, I personally don't, don't like the way that, um, you, know, you know, Nigerian political office holders and, you know, and the likes uh, simply just take advantage of, the, you know, the, the, the fact that they have control or they have some power and, and want to bully everyone into what they desire. Um, there should be a conversation about it. If you want to go that route, then let there be a conversation about it in the State House of Assembly. Let the people decide. You know, it would and, be and, very and, catastrophic, and, even if, you know, the, the government would decide that they are going to exercise their might and power, and then they ensure that, hey, you can't be there if you found you're going to be arrested. It, arrested what's going to happen? What? I don't know, but I'm just saying that, you know, the rate of crime would triple. You know, it would just triple and triple and triple in, you know, that particular state. And it was, you know, there would be a spillover. It would trickle down to other parts. So um, for every time, because we always have government saying, oh, we want to do this. And then you're not looking. It's like saying, you know, we're still having the argument of whether government should take away subsidy. We won't take away subsidy. But what provisions have we made? What, what have we put in place? Right? Do we have functional refineries? So before you, you, I mean, you come out as a governor or you come out as a political office holder to say, oh, let's get all the, you know, street prostitutes out of the road. I mean, uh, let's stop street prostitution and what have you, nightclubs? What have you put in place? What are they going to fall back to? Because like I said, apart from the fact that, you know, it could be pleasure for some people, it's also a serious economic, you know, necessity. And that's because government has failed. I mean, society has failed to provide the basic. And that's why people have resorted to, you know, finding well, a way to survive. You know, in my opinion, I, I, I personally don't see that as a genuine enough reason to get into uh, that space. You know, no, but I understand no, it. For a lot of people, like said, for, for, for a lot of people, that's the reason that you're on the street. Trust me. And, well, well, I, I wouldn't. I'm, I've, I've never been there. But I'm saying, you <laughs> I've know, never my been point there. Is, my you? point is, you know, I, I personally wouldn't agree that. Um, you know, it's a genuine enough reason, you know, that, oh, you know, the economy is bad, there are no jobs, and so I will go stand on the street and, you know, sell sex. 
Um, it's, you know, I think, I, I believe it's illegal in Nigeria. Um, um, but once again, mm. um, if the governor is saying that I don't like the way that these areas of, in Port Harcourt look, at night, they look rowdy, they look, you know, dusty, and they don't look safe. You know, then, then they can have a conversation on how to clean up those areas. You can't shut down people's businesses, you know, just like that. You also cannot stop the sale of sex in Port Harcourt. It will always exist. Um, so what would rather happen is that people will find other ways around it. And that's really the thing with, you know, making laws and not considering, you know, these other aspects. People would always find a way around it. Um, and, you know, if, if you've listened to the conversation on, on abortion, you know, and people talking about the legalizing of abortion, you know, they have continuously said that because it has been illegal, you know, in certain places across the world, people finding a way around it have, become, have made it more dangerous. Um, and it probably pretty much will make the same or will be the same thing with, you know, when you simply just ban something um, without considering these other aspects. But I'm sure that the people of River State will, you know, get into that conversation. Maybe the State House of Assembly will also be able to look into some of these things. Um, and um, the governor of the state would also maybe reconsider, you know, the, the, the ban, mostly because of how it will affect businesses, um, you know, the nightclub business in Port Harcourt, because that's not going anywhere. It's not going, going away at all. And the amount of businesses that will be affected would also be dangerous to the economy of Port Harcourt somehow, so maybe because of how much... Um, um, nightlife, you know, Potaco does um, um, enjoy. The last time I was there, it, it was, you know, a really fun place. Anyway, that's in River State, and, um, you know, we'll follow up on that and see where uh, that goes. Moving away from River State, let's talk about Nigeria now, and this is with regard to security. Um, if you've been following uh, news updates in the last couple of days, you must have heard a lot from the Auditor General of the Federation, who has been revealing a, a lot of, you know, mismanagement of, of funds, you know, from the National Assembly and other aspects. Um, our next top trending story is going to the Nigerian police force, where the Auditor General's office has once again declared that there is some level of misuse of, you know, of um, ammunition and funds. The report from the Auditor General revealed that 178,459 um, rifles and um, ammunition have been declared missing and unaccounted for, dating as far back as January 2020. Um, it's, of course, uh, contained in its latest query, which was released on the 15th of September 2021. Um, it goes on to say that the audit observed from the review of arms movement register, monthly return of arms and ammunition, and ammunition register at the armory section, that the total number of lost firearms is, uh, as at December 2018, stood at 178,459 pieces. Out of this number, 88,078 were AK-47 rifles, 3,907 assorted rifles and pistols across different police formations, which could not be accounted for as at January 2020. It also reports uh, that the failure of police to account for missing firearms violated paragraph 2603 of the Financial Regulations uh, Act. This, you know, should be shocking for everyone, but I saw a couple of questions that were interesting. How many police officers do we have that, you know, 178,000 uh, weapons are missing? And how do 178,000 weapons just go missing? in a country. Um, we've spoken numerous times about arms proliferation and the inflow of arms into Nigeria across the country and how Nigeria has millions and millions of, um, you know, of, of arms that are really just unaccounted for. Um, but now we're hearing that it is, you know, there's also a problem in the Nigerian police force uh, where 178,000 weapons have been missing between 2018 and 2020. Um, it is stunning to say the list. Um, and, you know, it, it makes you also wonder where these weapons have gone. You know, and, who, and who, who, who's, you know, who's currently in, in possession of these weapons? So, um, you know, it, it's very scary. That's number one. Uh, the fact that you want to begin to look at the parts, I mean, the face that we're as a country, uh, the rate of crime and criminality. And so just imagine, I mean, because right now you, you, we probably don't have the answers. So it would just be question. So imagine 178,000. 459 uh, firearms in the hands of unguarded, I mean, how do you, you, you can't control criminal elements across. So just imagine, you know, the, 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 the rate of um, uh, the fact that we're not safe, the unsafety 
um, atmosphere that we have created out of carelessness. And if the system now, because I mean, I mean, you have the report saying that the system has, these persons have actually violated a particular paragraph. What has happened to these persons? How did this weapon get missing in the first place? Who's responsible for all of this, right? So um, shouldn't we have people being punished? Because constantly you always ask yourself, every institution should have a mechanism of correcting itself. So does the Nigerian police force, I mean, we have the police service commission. We talked about all the time. All of this happening, what does the police, I mean, the uh, Nigerian uh, Police Service Commission done? I mean, why, why haven't we heard that persons have been, because you, you can't be that careless. People need to be accountable. People need to be held responsible for this. But as usual, it's Nigeria, and that would always be the phrase, nothing will happen, nothing has happened. And yeah. we're not worried that we have uh, this number of fire, I mean, uh, firearms unaccounted for. We can't find, we don't know where they are. Is that what we're saying? Uh, who took them? How did it get out? What's the problem? Are we selling them off? Are people coming to our offices and a space to take them? These are some of the questions that we're hoping that yeah. we'll get answers to. Yeah, but it's really, really scary. I mean, to think that this is out there and we do not know where it is and we cannot account for all of that and nothing has be, been done. Uh, no, no, it's quite sad. Yeah, and, and, you know, like you said, you know, you know the, the big question would be what happens next, you know, and is the Nigerian police force, you know, and, the, you know, through all its hierarchy, not aware that 170,000 weapons were missing in the last couple of years? Did it take the, did they have to take the Auditor General of Federation to put this information out? Did the police not know that they had lost that many weapons? And if they did, then how did they stay silent about it, you know, so long? I understand that every now and then you hear of robbers attacking police officers and taking their weapons but not 178,000, you know, and, and that's definitely... Um, that's almost like 200,000. Yeah, and that's, then we're looking at the police force of about 400,000 or thereabouts. You can imagine. But it also mentioned that 3.22 billion naira um, is also, you know, lost, you know, and unaccounted for, you know, and was given to contractors and there was no verification or no, you know, uh, paperwork to show where these funds were paid to or who these funds were paid to or what contracts they were paid for, um, also from the uh, Nigerian police force. Luckily, we have, you know, an extended conversation about this sometime around 8.30 this morning, so look out for it. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we're kicking off with Off the Press, where we share the major stories making headlines across Nigeria this morning. Stay with us.